Hi, this is Simon Chan and welcome to my No BS, No Hype Network Marketing Training. In this special training today, we're going to have one of the dynamic leaders from Melbourne, Hermione Zhu, share how she became successful and became a go-director. Uh, Hermione's been with my Diamond Mastermind for almost a year and um, you know I'm really proud of how she's grown in the past year, just watching her grow as a leader. And you're going to hear from her directly, a very motivating story. Uh, just from her background, how she came from China, how her parents, her friends, family all had to chip in to uh, save money, basically to get her to Melbourne, to Australia, to study as a student. And uh, once she got to Melbourne, um, she had no money because all her money was spent on basically the airfare to get her there. So then she had to work two restaurant jobs um, and was just like getting sick and tired of slaving away there, being a full-time student until um, until she found out network marketing. So pay attention. Uh, the reason I want you to pay attention, there's three big lessons here. Number one, when Hermione got started, she wanted to get started because she hated the restaurant business, you know, job that she had, but she had no money. So you're going to learn from her what she did to get started even we had no money. And... If you listen to this, this is something that you can teach your distributors, that it's something that you can apply to help you sponsor more people. The second thing is, uh, when she first started, uh, she didn't have the skills. You know, she had low self-esteem, and worse, she was afraid to talk to her friends about the business because not only was she afraid of the rejection, but she was afraid that her friends will look down on her because she was doing this network marketing thing. And she can share with you how she overcome that. And the third thing is, uh, you know, when I started working with Hermione, her business, uh, she was at a decent level. But what really took off in the past year to help her become gold? What did she do as a leader that really got her team going? So she's going to share uh, those three things, especially other uh, lessons as well. Those are just the big three. So you definitely want to pay attention to this. Take out your notes. Um, you know, watch this over and over again. These are lessons that you can learn. And there's also a lot of stories there that you can use for your to help you prospect as well when uh, prospect throws up objections like I don't have money. So go watch this, pay attention to it. And, uh, you know, with that said, let's go straight to the interview and the training. Okay, so let me ask you. So uh, you've been a, share a little bit about your background so people know who you are and how you came across the business. Okay, um, so my name is Hermione. Um, I'm an international student. Right now I'm studying in... Melbourne University. It's my third year now, and I came from China. And how I came up to you found the opportunity because it has to go back to my story. Because um, sending out me to studying overseas is a really huge decision for my family. Because um, my my family, my parents need to get enough money for my tuition. It's really expensive for international international student to study here. So. In order to send me go abroad, my mom actually changed her job. And even my grandparents and my auntie and my father contribute their savings for me to go overseas to study. So before I came to Melbourne, I know that I have to like work hard and study hard in order to gain enough experience. Otherwise, I just wasting my parents' money and I have to earn my own livings here. So after I landed in Melbourne, the first thing is I just find some jobs. But for an international student who does not have any experience and skills, the only job for me are working in the restaurants. So I choose few um, restaurants to work in. But few months later, I lose the excitement of working in the restaurant because I felt I didn't learn anything from those restaurant jobs. And I didn't satisfy it with the life because I was so nervous every day of working. Of like, I was, I was afraid of my boss is like saying something, like asking me to do something. So I didn't like that at all. Then my friends introduced Yosana Business to me because um, I joined a student society in uni. I want to make more friends there. So one of my friends there introduced Yosana to me. So I was really excited about the opportunity because back. <laughs> When I was in back then, when I was in high school, I read the book Richer Than a Poor Dad, which is suggested by my auntie, and I really like the idea of being financially free. And when I see all the pictures, the dreams there, I was like, yes, I want to do it. Um, but I did doubt about myself whether I could do it or not, and also I didn't have a lot of savings with myself. So 
Um, but I know if I didn't do USANA, I was still working in the restaurant. Then, um, then maybe after I graduate, I'll just go back to China and ended up with finding a job. So I just like invest all the savings I have and started with one business center. Yeah, and that's how I start my USANA journey. Uh, what was the, some of the biggest challenges you had uh, when you first started? When I first started, the biggest challenge for me, I think, is self-esteem. Because I was really low in self-esteem. I was really afraid of talking to my friends about the use of the business. Because I like, I, I was afraid they were talking something bad to me. Like, oh, why Hermione is doing this kind of thing? And I was afraid. I was afraid of listening, uh, of knowing my friends. No, I want to make money from them. So I was really, really afraid of that. So it's really hard for me to get to get rid of this. And another challenge for me is um, because I invest all the saving I have to USANA, and uh, I have to get money for my other livings. So that's a huge challenge for me as well. Yeah. So. Um... So, so those are two challenges a lot of people relate to. Uh, for the first one, I mean, this low self-esteem and being embarrassed. I think a lot of people can relate to that, being embarrassed in network marketing. How did you overcome that? Well, um, I even though I was low in self-esteem, I know that I have to change my change the situation. So I always go to the trainings and the meetings. Uh, they are all the successful, uh, like, uh, all the successful distributors, they are sharing their experience of how to overcome those challenges. So I was like, I want to be them and I have to jump out of my comfortable zone and like call, talking to my friends and constantly learning and get myself to be positive if I get rejection. Yeah, and then um, I think after I talk to few people, then my confidence level start to increase, then I can do it better. So um, we said dealing with rejection, uh, and of course it feels yeah. bad, and you had low self-esteem. Yeah. So what did you do to make yourself feel better? When you, you know, when you get rejected. Well, I get rejected. Oh uh, well, uh, I talk to my offline because my offline always give me a lot of like motivation. If I feel sad and I like I was so worried about this, and I just call my offline and call the leaders to get some suggestions that really helpful for me good so using the upline is very very important right um, when you're up you go down when you're down you go up when you're feeling good yeah, you go tell your downlines when you're feeling down you always tell your uplines now um, you also said that you had no money because you invested everything so how did you uh, did you still have to work at that those restaurant jobs while you're doing the business and still be in school well um, when I start because before I started USANA business, I got two part-time jobs. When I started USANA, I realized I didn't have time to do jobs and USANA business. So in the first month, I quit one job and remain another one. Uh, and remain another one for my basic livings. But then I realized USANA business actually got potential. And even though I didn't earn a lot of money and I want to put more time on Yosana because I, I felt wasting time while I was actually serving the customers in restaurant. So um, I think that's three months later, I quit another job. Yeah, I quit another job just focusing on doing Yosana. But I didn't have money. So so I have to, to get loan from uni and I actually borrow money from my friends in order to pay for my livings. But I like... I just trying to force myself to do more in USANA and getting the money back. Hey, so that's a great um, story for everyone can use to share when you have a prospect that says they have no money, right? So no money just means no creativity. You you were creative. You say you borrowed friend, borrowed money from friends, borrowed money from family, and then because uh, you, you knew you were going to be able to pay them back, right? You had the vision. Yeah. So. So that's a great story. You can everyone can share. It's a gold director who's uh, earning now, in you know more than a lot of people who worked at, at the university. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. But uh, she had no money. But it's just about being creative to come up with the money, right? If she never did that, she'd still be stuck. I mean, if you didn't do the business, where would you be now? Let me ask you. Uh, me. 
Yeah, so, if you didn't have the business, what would you be doing now? Wow, well, still working in restaurants. <laughs> I think no other change. Maybe I'll find another job, maybe a better job than restaurants, but still working. Yeah. yeah. And doing my uni stuff. I think I lost a lot of hope uh, because I know, like, compared to my other friends in uni, they are about to graduate now. And they are in better situation while, while I was entered in, uh, while, like, because we enter uni at the same time and they were in the better situation than me because they got the support from their parents. So they got time and to do some internship or to think of, to learn some other skills. But right now, most of them are worrying about the jobs, if, whether they can get a job if they graduate. And they are worrying about if they can stay here or go back to China. And mo most of them di didn't have any income resources. So yeah, so it's, it's, it's a great lesson. Summer. That's a great yeah. lesson in terms of like uh, when this hardship it makes you stronger and better, right? Yeah. If things are easy, then people get spoiled and they're lazier. And so it's easy on the short term, like your friends who were, at the beginning they might have it easier than you, but now yes. it seems like it's going to be much tougher for them, right? True. And it's that, it's like the challenge I uh, I ask myself with my son. Do I want him to be have a good life. But I also want to challenge him, make it tough. Because if he gets it easy, then later on he's going to suffer. Right? So your friends had it easy at the beginning, but now they're going to, and you had it much tougher, but now your life is way, way better than them. Right? Yes. The, what are your future plans? I mean, you're going to graduate soon, and what, what are your future plans? My future plans? Okay. Um, I'll graduate on of this year, and... Definitely, I'll do USANA full time after I graduate because I see my USANA business as my career now. Um, and yeah, and I would like to actually, right now, I got the vision to help the international student or the uni student who got a similar situation as me or who wants to do, like, who wants to do different things of, like me to help to establish their business because I found out most of uni students they don't have the mindset of um, entrepreneurship and they don't have they just want to find a like they, they thought after they graduate they can get a good job but that's not the situation so I want to help more students to realize what they can do and to fulfill their potential yeah yes it's very good and also Michelle talked about like you have a great, uh, Hermione builds a great team called UFI, great leaders like Michelle, Barbie, uh, Catherine, Shiyu, Sabrina, they all are mastermind members. Um, and you had a vision to get them, you know the importance of self-development, right? You got them into the mastermind groups. Yes. Why did you decide to do that? Well, why did you decide to get that, make that investment? Well, um, I was like, I was passionate about self-development. Because I know all the things I have, because because we don't have skills, because I didn't have skills, because I didn't know how to do business, and I go to everyone. When I first do Yusana, I ask, I, I I go to every trainings to learn there, and when I learn, I know what to do, and gradually I'm improving. So I feel like if other people definitely, if they want to do this business better, they have to learn they have to learn in order to apply and to get into better. Otherwise, if they just do the business, they don't know uh, what to in, where to improve and uh, like they cannot see the greater potential. So that's why when I see Simon has this mastermind group, I felt like, wow, there's a, I can learn from the three star diamonds and there, I can, um, there must be something great here. So I just getting them all involved in the mastermind group. It's a good leadership. I mean, all good leaders get the teams into some type of training program, right? Uh, whether it's my mastermind or just having a book of the book of the month. Every book you read a book, or even it could be a book every quarter. You read one. You know, one of the things I did with my group was like reading John Maxwell, uh, Twenty One Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, and you can every week read one chapter, and then when you meet with your team, you share. Then so you make sure you work in the mindset because it's all about the mindset. Like once you change. Right. If you change it up here, then everything becomes easy. And, and speaking mm -hmm. of change, you know, we talk about. Um, and by the way, before I talk about 
change. I mean, that's a great story where she shared what everyone can use again, where she had her friends who were had a little bit of support from her her from their parents, right? So they didn't need to worry about the money at the beginning. Uh, while Hermione was come from a poor background and didn't have money, so she had to work hard and to struggle and scrap. But now, like four years later, right? Four years later, now their friends who have been easy now you know, are worried about finding a job and maybe not even have a visa. So they have to go back to China and they can't even stay in Australia. Well, now you're going to be able to do the business full time. You have guaranteed income coming in. So that's a great story everyone can use. Uh, that uh, And again, remember, prospecting is about telling stories. It's a great story you can use, uh, again, about the A or B, right? Again, it's like the, you want to be the good guy or the bad guy. It's a great story where, like, the good person, the heroine, is always the one who's starting off bad and tough background. It's that kind of like Cinderella. And then all of a sudden, she has a happy ending. While the other people they had it easy, but now, because they didn't take action, they didn't do, they didn't do the business, now they're worried about their jobs and have to go home. It's a very good story. So when you listen to the story, don't just use it as like, oh, this is very motivation, it's inspiring, right? Think about how you can use different bits and pieces of it for your prospecting. Okay, that's that's the really take home. Um, think that something that you can, and that's the reason I'm doing these, having these leaders share. So not only you get a motivation, but you can use these stories for your prospecting to build your build, you know, because success. Everyone, there's tons of people who are successful. You've heard a lot of a lot of them, but we could all learn something and take different pieces of them and use that to like Hermione's story is great. I mean, right now we have the story about the you know, it's not like the Cinderella story, right? The poor with nothing, and then versus the uh, friends who have everything. But now at the end, the Cinderella has the happy ending. Uh, also, the story about um, the no money that's another great, right? No money, uh, how you dealt with rejection, talking the upline. These are all stories you can use. And even not just for prospecting, but for your trainings, you guys can share. So I plan to have this up on my website. You can share it. Uh, you guys, you know, share the story. Or even if you don't share on the website, just share it when you meet people. Share these stories. These are real stories. Okay. Um, Michelle has a comment. Let's see. Is um... oh, Okay. Thank you, Michelle, for the comment about the city convention. Yeah, I mean, you saw us and you took advantage. And the, the thing is, she took advantage. She, she got her team to do some type of self-development, right? Whether it was my mastermind group is great, whether it's something else, you have to invest in your team. When you invest in your mindset of your team, when their minds change, that's when the, the income will change. So I would, to wrap it up, I have a couple other questions here, Hermione. It's like you talked about, um, you know, success is a journey and you've gone through You've changed a lot, and you, it's only really beginning for you because you have really much bigger plans. And I think after you graduate, when you really take advantage of the China market, you can be the superstar diamond. You know, there's huge advantages because you have the uh, China connections there. Um, and since success is a journey, how have you seen yourself change from, you know, when you first started, your low self-esteem, rejected, to where you are now? What ways have you changed as a person? Well, um there are a lot of things changed to me. Um, I was introvert. I I like I was really low in self esteem. And but right now, I felt like I have the. Not only I can communicate with my friends very well, but also I felt I have the ability to help my friends. Like I I have the ability to tell them to help them in their life or help them in like um in their future. Like to tell them, okay, you should if you do this, and then you will have a greater future. I can give them suggestion. That's what I felt. Uh, that's a great, um, that's amazing feeling. And another thing is, when I first started Yusana, I always focus on myself because I need money uh, to repay my loan, and I um, and I felt like, oh, I want to do this well. Then I send up a lot of people, and I um, I like talking to a lot of people just in order to get money for me. But um, gradually when I do USANA, I realize USANA is not only for myself. I can actually help my downlines, like my downlines to grow and help others to take the product if they have a better health and then they can uh, they can stay in this business, uh, they can stay with the product for longer time. And if my, I help my downlines to grow as a leader, 
not like an employee or like a salesperson, then they'll stay in this business longer. The, like that's a major mindset change for me. I right now I felt like well I'm I'm getting from a supporter. I'm, I'm changing from a supporter to a leader to actually thinking how to help others. Hey, that's awesome. I'm very happy to hear that. You know, lead, and I've actually seen how you've grown. Uh, so mine has been with our mastermind group for almost a year and uh, definitely from the first time. And not just the way you market yourself, but the way you com you're communicating. Um, you know, like like I said, leadership, like a year ago, you probably would not have said that. You know, a leader, um, you're, I mean, you're a leader, but not where you are now. And leadership is about, it's like a responsibility, right? You're you're responsible, you're working to help your team develop the mindset. And you know that as they grow, um, you will grow. You, as, you know, as they grow, the income will grow and you will grow, right? And it's about investing in people and helping, like Zig Ziglar says, if you help enough people get what they want in life, you get everything you want in life. Um, so, and that's what makes it fun. Like after now we're marketing. I mean, you've got great, you got great leaders, Right. So I think it's, every time I go on your Facebook, look at it, it's great. You guys seem to have a lot of fun. And when I was in Melbourne, um, you know, even the short time I was there, we had a good time, especially the last dinner, just sharing with your team. It's, it was really cool. The what what is the, um, you know, since we're talking about a mastermind group, what's some things you've learned? For I mean, a lot of people say, you know, they have learned stuff from me from my blog posts or whatever. But what's a couple of things that you have learned that you have applied? Um, that really helped you the most? Um, well, one thing that I learned most is providing values to others. Because in the beginning, I thought sales or like signing up people is just getting people into the business. I didn't really think about if I provide value to, to others, then they'll like, then it adding my credibility. I help them and also they'll, they'll like they, it increased the possibility they signing up to the business. I didn't think about this at all, but after I learned from Simon and Simon constantly reminding me because I always like going to his training, always reminding that we need to provide in value. And finally, I realized, wow, like this is a people help people business. If I constantly providing value to my friends, of course, there's one day they will see this is a for them and the product is actually suitable for them. It's good for them. Yeah, that's one great thing that I learned from Simon. You know, and another uh, thing. Yeah. Go ahead. What you said, another thing? Yeah, yeah. There's, of course, a lot of things. Another thing is about marketing. Uh, I didn't know doing network marketing, like there's there's a thing called marketing in doing network marketing because I didn't have the concept at all. I thought I just go out to talk to people, that's all. Um, but um, Simon let me know the network marketing is a real business. If you have business, you, you really have the marketing side. So you really have to position yourself in the marketplace and to like promote yourself or promote the, like promote, yeah, promote yourself. Good, very good. And you also shared, uh, very good. You know, one see Hermione, she actually is in the two issues of MLM Training Magazine. You can get it. Uh, she actually has the first Chinese article there. So she wrote an English one, the first issue, and the last issue, she wrote a Chinese article. So definitely, if you can read Chinese, definitely go check it out. Okay. And she also talked about time management. I think mean, one of the things I see how Hermione changed. Her downlines, her leader, your leaders told me they see your change was when you changed, when you saw the my MLM Extreme Productivity Regimen and start, you know, look, looking at time differently. Uh, um, and what, what do you share real quick about the time management? And what you did, because I know you, especially you're so busy with the jobs and the school and stuff. What did you do? Well, um, I have to write down what I do for the next day and plan what I want to do for the next week. And if I have the, when I have the plan, then everything become easier. And I have to use my time wisely because before I always waste my time on like talking to, like maybe go on Facebook or the social media, the other social media randomly and like just I, then I realized it's actually wasting my time. So when I know what I learned from Simon, like time is money. And I really use my time wisely and write down what I should do and to do the most important things in the like uh, every morning do the most important thing. 
then for the rest of the day, I can be like relaxed and do the other thing. Then I can balance balance all the things well. Good, and it's all about time management. It's all about attitude, right? And and when you do the most important thing first, you feel good, right? Yes. You feel good, so your self esteem goes up, and then you actually because you feel good, you can get even more things done, right? Yes. So uh, as we wrap up, what's one thing, uh, one important lesson that you would like everyone to know? If you can share one most important thing for people, what would it be? Um, most important thing? One thing, um, I think from my story, one thing is if you, if you actually have dream or if you see your son of business has potential and can help you, you you'd really focus on doing this business. You better like if you have a backup. For example, if you have if you are still doing job as a backup, or if you think still thinking of doing something else, you cannot totally focus on this business. Then your business will just uh, get, like reward you as a part time job. It will it cannot grow as fast as you want and as as big as you want. So if you really focus on this business, maybe right now you are, your business is growing very, very slow, but, but there will be one day that your business boom because you invest all the time on this business and you, you, have this, you, you will learn the skill eventually, I believe. All right, yeah, you have to go all in, right? It goes back to every uh, successful leader, you gotta make the commitment. Now, you may be busy with a part-time, you have a job, things, but mentally you're all in, you're always thinking about the business. And so, yeah. so good. Thank you so much for sharing. I think very, very inspiring story. Um, not just it's motivating, but you shared a lot of stories that we can all use um, to train our teams, to, you know, answer objections with prospects. So thank you for sharing, get Hermione. And uh, I think you'd be a superstar diamond and, you uh, we look forward to see you on stage. And you will be yeah, oh, very impressed with your attitude. You know, just the stuff you overcome is really amazing. And thank you for inspiring us. Thanks, Simon. And thanks, everyone, for listening. All right. So thank you again. So uh, thanks again, Hermione, for sharing. Um, any questions for Hermione, by the way? Any questions? Anything you want to ask? Okay, so a question for you, uh, Hermione. Uh, did you work the uh, business in Australia and China as well? If yes, do you use Skype? What do you do for your China business? Or do you have a China business? Oh, yes, I do have China business. Um, but most of my, uh, like in China, most of them are customers. Because I don't really have, uh, right now, I don't have the time uh, and energy to growing the team in China. So I'm more focusing on, on developing customers in China. Um, I do use Skype just by talking with them. Like, yeah, and I do I use other social media like QQ, WeChat with my Chinese customers there. And yeah, if they have uh, questions and problems, I'll reply them on the social media. Okay, and uh, what question from Guillermo too? How was your gold run? How many downlines did you have uh, when you started your gold run? How many active distributors? That's a great question. Well, so um, how was my gold run? It was great. So all the things I think one of the thing why I can achieve gold um, in the first of in the January of this year is because we make a really completed plan in. Uh, before I start my gold run, we plan to be gold two months earlier. So at that time, like Michelle, Bobby, they are now silver. They are, uh, they are. I think they are achiever builder, and they are. They just have some customers and just have few downlines with them. I and the, believe Oh, uh, and yeah, and they yeah, and they we plan we planned two months uh, two months before my gold run and to see how many downlines, how many active downlines we need to sign up and um, how many, like, uh, who, like, what, how many points we need. And they were prepared for, for the whole two months. And for the active downlines, I got, um, including my customers, I got uh, 
after 40, 40, 50, I forgot. Yeah. So you said you have 50 uh, downlines or 50 customers? Um, downlines are the customers. Oh, downlines as customers, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But like, but for the main leaders, while I'm making the run, it's, um, I think, Bobby, Michelle, Sabrina, Catherine. Uh, it's around, it's around 20, I think. Okay, so basically 70 yes. people. Yeah. 70 people, yeah. 50 people don't do anything. 20 people yeah. actually do something. So yeah. that, that's a good number to go for when you become gold, having 70, yeah. 75 people. Because okay, when you have 75 people, again, you are going to have people who don't do anything. But when you have so many people, you're going to have a critical mass of people that will do. You have a Michelle, a Bobby, a Catherine, a Sabrina. Those type of people will be will emerge. Right, that's why when people say, I want to be gold, I really should target to 75 people. Once you have to hit that number 75, you can really, or 70, like you can hit 70, you have a chance to uh, make it. Okay, and Darren asked, how long did it take you to go gold? How long? Yeah, how many oh, years okay. you started the business? Um, one year and one year and 10 months. So one year and 10 months to make it. One year, uh, yeah, one year or 10 months. All right, okay, thank you so much for sharing, Hermione. It's been great. If you guys have any other questions for her, you can post her on the wall. And uh, thank you for inspiring everyone. This is an awesome call. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thanks, thanks. Hope my story can help you. So there you go. There you have it. Thanks again to Hermione Zhu for sharing. Uh, she's a gold director now, and I'm sure. You know, years from now, you smile and we will all cheer her on. She'll be a super, superstar diamond director. She's got the not just the skills, uh, the mindset, but also the heart to really make a difference in people's lives. So go out there and apply what you learn. Again, this is Simon Chan. Thank you for watching my No BS, No Hype Network Marketing Training. And like Hermani says, we're in the business to provide value, to make an impact, help others. So go out there and make sure you have a positive impact on someone's life today. God bless you all.